like the final first. The banging form Fenson versus the bang out form York. And on paper, this looks like it's going to be a, a simple game. But you know, the, the form book, I'm, I'm just looking for it now. I'm going to throw it out there. It's got the form book here. I should have written form it out the window because it's Wembley and anything could happen, as we know. But uh, I think anyone with a cursory look at the uh, way these teams have been travelling would think it would be a feathers and win on Saturday lunchtime. I think it probably will be, but the one thing that York will be holding their hat on um, is they have a lot of experienced players in their ranks who played in finals or been in big games. Um, and that, you know, might just tip the scales because whilst Featherstone clearly uh, are the side that you would put your money on if you had a shilling to spare, um, Wembley in the sun with 45,000 people and can do funny things to players who haven't been there before. Um, so I wouldn't rule York out. I think if they can get a performance out of the likes of Danny Kerman, Ryan Atkins, Adam Cuthbertson, Kieran Dixon, um, it, it's not a foregone conclusion that that level of experience, if they can keep themselves in the game long enough, that could be the difference. I think you'd say Featherston are going to be the favourites. I think you'd probably, at this stage, you know, Wednesday night, will probably say they're going to win. But it wouldn't surprise me if York did. The good news for uh, Feathers and, is, as opposed to York, if York do an open-top bus tour around York, it'll take a couple of hours through Feathers just up and down that main street. So that, that's all it'll take them if they, uh, if they win. And they're allowed back in their bar to celebrate, which is the other good news uh, for Feathers and Can I? Uh, <laughs> for getting in trouble. So I think I've been banned from Feathers. Um, I think half the uh, Feathers and Endies is going to be full of members of my family as well, which is quite amusing. Um, and that's followed by the uh, Super Challenge Cup final, St. Helens versus the Castleford Tigers. Um, Peter Matauti today, who uh, revealed to 4020 TV in a question that I, ans- I asked him, that I didn't know that Mal really was from Cass. He thought he was from Newcastle. Uh, but, but he's from Castleford. Uh, and... Two teams with lots of history. Castleford obviously haven't won it since 86. Been there a couple of times since. St. Helens. I think they haven't won it until the 50s for the first time. But obviously have this record now of just not being able to win the Cup. And we saw Warrington beat them a couple of years ago. It's rest and stale with the controversial decision that wasn't. I think all the pressure's on them this week, isn't it? Because they're expected to go in and win this. I guess a bit like fans, and they're expected to go in and win this one against a Castlewood team who are in no form whatsoever. Forget the, the result of the weekend. Before that, they weren't in any form. Yet, I don't know. I don't know about this one. I think that's the great thing, that you can make a case for both. Um, I, I think what we do know is that, and, and isn't it amazing, they've never met each other in a major final either. So, you know, that, that, that's adding to the history of both clubs. Um, they both play rugby the right way. They're going to have the perfect stage on which to do it. It's going to be a fast track um, that will suit them. I can't see any delaying or slowing down tactics. When Cass beat Warrington in the semi-final, they went round them rather than through them. Um, I genuinely have no idea who is going to win this. I, I, I think Cass have ever since they got to the final, have been planning for the final. I think that makes them very dangerous. I think they've also got some um, memory of 2014 when they went to Wembley and the occasion overawed them. I don't think it will this time. I think there are still quite a few there with a memory of what happened in 2017 as well, which was a different sort of occasion. But again, on that big stage, they were found wanting. Well, quite a lot of those players, the likes of Ollie Holmes, who's leaving at the end of the year, they now know what to expect. It won't come as a surprise to them. They will be absolutely 100% focused. Um, Saints have only played, what was it, once in the last three weeks, month? Not That's not ideal preparation, but they'll be fit and they'll be rested and they'll start with an intensity that more often than not, if they get it right and don't drop the ball, does tend to blow opposition teams away. But they look fallible when they lost to Warrington. Um, you know, they, they weren't crash hot against Wakefield this week. You know, they struggled to get over a very spirited Wakefield team. Um, but there are some, as we said at the beginning of the programme, there's some players in that side as well who may be at their last opportunity to win at Wembley. Um, I can't call it. 
I, I just think we're going to get a real spectacle. It could be high scoring. There could be a lot of skill on display. Um, I think it'll, it'll, you know, it, it, it'll be an intensity that we don't get week to week in Super League. Um, I'm hoping that the six again rule doesn't have us all putting our head in our hands because that gives the side um, so much possession that it counts. Uh, I won't use the word momentum in case Mr. Studd's watching. Um, so I don't know. Um, and I just think this is one, if you're not a fan of either team, you sit back and absolutely enjoy because I'd be very surprised if this isn't the game that rugby league needs at the moment. Congratulations to Liam Moore, our former guest, who's uh, going to be refereeing on, on Saturday. Um, my mind always goes back to 2014 because it was the first game I did at Wembley as a professional um, broadcaster, as opposed to being a fan in the stands, which was 93. And I, I can't remember the fact that winners had a player sent off. I was there and I can't remember it. I can remember a fire strike the year after, but I can't remember that. Um, and the two things about the 2014 final that spring to mind as we speak about this one is... Saints aren't going to play in the way Leeds did in kicking them to death, no. which Kevin Sindrill was a master of because they just don't do that. Although I'm sure, and, we, are, and we don't have scrums too. anymore, so I it's just giving away possession. I forgot about scrums, um, and uh, they've got to come back soon, presumably if restrictions are lifted. Well, especially with the World Cup coming, where they will be there, um, even if the Aussies not, aren't. Not been mentioned yet, but I think the, that scrums will be back soon. That's the tagline: Aussies aren't here, scrums are. Come watch the World Cup. Um, but the other thing from the 2014 final was all the build-up from a castle for perspective was based around will Craig Hubie play or not. I know they've got players who are carrying knocks or whatever. I think Grant Milton's one of them. You would think that Daryl Powell would have learned from that experience that you can't go into Wembley into a major final with almost half a player because if it goes wrong, as it did then, it's just a waste of time for everyone. Wembley has always found out the players that are injured, not least if it's a really hot day. So, uh, you know, the likes of Gavin Miller, Keith Senior, there's an endless list of players who have played injured. The only man who consistently played injured and got away with it was Ellery Hanley, who every time he played at Wembley was Willy Wonty and then produced a piece of magic most times that he did play, unless he was wearing a lead shirt, clearly. But uh, um, no, if you're injured, I mean, I, I would hope and expect that, although we haven't heard it yet, that Daryl has already told his players what, what the team is to settle them down. You know, They'll be training exactly as they know they're going to be playing. And I think if he's learned one lesson from 2014, that's it. And if your playmaker's out, you find a way of coping with it. You don't wait until the morning of the game and give them a yet another fitness test, play them and find that actually they weren't. So, uh, no, I, I, I am so looking forward to this because I think it's got all the ingredients of being everything that's best about rugby league. And for all the people who got very upset about the gamesmanship in the, the football at the weekend, uh, don't forget that Wembley saw one of the greatest ever uh, gamesmanship things in the history of sport with Alec Murphy and scrums and stuff. So, you know, don't, don't, don't be... Uh, and and lay, laying down in 1971 to get uh, Sid Hines sent off. Leeds have had enough look at Wembley. It's all right. <laughs> uh, it will, you were there last year when there was nobody there. Um, Niall Levels was asked about this earlier because obviously he played in that game but it's going to be obviously we've been to Wembley countless times we know what it's like when it's full but having been there last year I'm guessing this year is going to be uh, it's going to make us appreciate what we've gone through a little bit more because we will be seeing not quite a full Wembley and I don't know if we'll ever see a full Wembley again but a, something approaching a normal uh, normal Challenge Cup final crowd anyway and it's going to be a shock to the players because don't forget they've been playing without crowds for a very long period of time and with restricted crowds. Um, they they will be blown away by suddenly playing in front of 45,000 people and that may affect some of them because, again, psychologically, being in that um, stadium with everything that's at stake on the, the BBC all afternoon, Teams have frozen before at Wembley for that exact reason. And all of a sudden going from playing in front of three and a half thousand um, that sound like 10 at their local stadium to 45,000 that sound like 80 at the national stadium. 
it's going to take a lot of getting used to. But, but for, even for those of us that are there, it's going to feel really, really weird, but in a good way. Obviously, I am neutral. Uh, Wakefield not in the final. My nephew's going to Wembley for the first time. He's seven and Cass are in the final. So I, when am I going to see Wakefield in the final? I'm 40. It's not fair. Answer, probably never. Um, I just hope everyone who goes has a great day. All the players have a great match. The referees make no, you know, contentious decisions. But I just want to say, um, I hope Tom Maguire has a really good day because he was instrumental in helping us in our move from the other place to here um, secretly at the time <laughs> because he was still being paid by them. Uh, but he was a key in us getting back on the air in this form. Uh, I'm not sure we're doing it justice at the minute in the way we are, but uh, I, I really hope he has a good Wembley experience and uh, you know, may the best teams win in the end. And whoever deserves to be drunk on Saturday night, enjoy it. Who are we going to uh, vote for the Lance Todd? I think there's a lot of candidates, which is, again, another reason why I'm so looking forward to it. You know, I don't know what the betting is. I've, I've not seen uh, who might be the favourites, but um, genuinely, th this is the opportunity for someone to shine. Um, and I have no idea who it's going to be. It, it, I, I would imagine that uh, Paul McShane and James Rowe will be up there in the betting. Clearly, Johnny Lomax will as well. Uh, Jake Truman, uh, you'd hope that he's fully fit, can exert his influence on the game. But this, again, could be a game where a winger scores a hat-trick or a you know, centre pulls off a try-saving tackle or a, a, a second rower like Ollie Hose makes 7,000 tackles in the game. Louis McCarthy, Scarsbrook, you know, finally conquers his home city. There are so many people who could be a candidate. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it immensely. I, I, I don't know if it's come across tonight, but I am giddiest kipper um, wait, waiting for it. I'm really excited. No, I can't wait. It's going to be a great day. Um, and I think we'll all we'll all enjoy it because there's too much. I know we get accused of being negative. There is plenty of negative things around rugby league and we have to talk about them. But at least when we get to a big game, you know, like the grand final last year, we we're all excited for that. And it turned out to be the most amazing finish we've ever seen. And this... Fingers crossed is, is a good game and everyone enjoys themselves and whatever happens, hopefully some uh, some good news coming out of it in terms of the stories and then we can focus on the negative again next Monday when we've got to rebuild the sport. But un until Saturday, it's all it's all good. It's all good. Well, the highest number of points ever scored in a Challenge Cup final is 72. Have 5p that that might be beaten this weekend. And, uh, you know, maybe someone can try score four drop goals because three is the record held by uh, the man who's not on the statue. Always goes back to that. Uh, Phil, thank you very much. Uh, I think we've spoken about everything. The new issue of 4020 is, is not out this week. It's out next week. Well, it's two things. One is it's a special issue. Um, it's, a, it's a 10th anniversary issue, which is ridiculous. Um, but also we have to include everything that's going to happen in the Challenge Cup. So, yeah, it'd be, it'd be slightly later than normal, but it'd be worth it because it'd be 84 pages. 84 pages. It's like the TV Times. I never knew there was so much in it. Um, one for the teenagers. Uh, Phil, thank you very much. I, sh I shall see you on Saturday. We will. I think we'll be doing some video from Wembley because uh, they can't throw us out. Because <laughs> we see we saw the weekend. You can do whatever you want now at Wembley. So it'll be all right. We're, we're going to get away with it. Uh, so uh, have a good week. Fingers crossed. Everything is okay and everyone gets in the stadium okay and uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah.